Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube space. So I just hit 500 subscribers in this channel, which is kind of cool. So I appreciate everybody watching and subscribing and liking my videos. I hope you find value in one way or the other. And stay tuned for more videos in the finance, investing and cryptocurrency space because I'm going to be making a lot more on them. Having said that, uh, today we're going to talk about Ethereum. Now, if you kind of watch the finance space or investment space in general, then this term, I mean, obviously you've heard about this term Ethereum and we're going to talk about how Ethereum might be a very good financial investment and probably a better cryptocurrency than Bitcoin. But before diving into this video, two disclaimers. First, this is not financial advice. So even if you plan on investing in Ethereum, how much is the big question? What percentage of your portfolio should go into Ethereum? And that is based on your risk management and how much how much risk you're willing to take and what age you are what are your financial goals right and the second one is whatever details i'm going to be sharing is as of today right so i i'm going to talk about market cap and as compared to bitcoin and all of those things so that is as of when i'm posting this video because things change and the the price fluctuates so much so it's very difficult to keep track of that so uh, that's that and let's go ahead all right so just from an investment standpoint ethereum has almost 5x this year so if you would have invested 1 lakh inr uh, the, at, at this moment you would have had 5 lakhs INR, so it is 5x right and it's important to understand why this is happening why there is so much institutional investment in this in this particular cryptocurrency all right so ethereum is a blockchain and every blockchain has its own token has its own currency and that the name of the currency in this case is called Ether and or ETH, what, what is traded on, on these exchanges, right? So we know it as ETH. Now let's try to contrast Ethereum with Bitcoin because Bitcoin used to be the real deal. It, it used to be like the only cryptocurrency that anyone ever talked about before like 2019. Ethereum just started gaining so much buzz from like uh, late 2020s, although it has been around since 2015, right? So why, why is this happening? All right, so Bitcoin was used to decentralize money so bitcoin's job was to replace banks but ethereum's job is to replace ethereum is used to decentralize services and applications so it's way more than just money ethereum is almost like decentralizing the internet now ethereum was created by this 28 year old i think 28 year old billionaire called vitalik buterin and he was playing a game world of warcraft and in in a fresh update of the game some gun was removed all right and then he thought of why not decentralize the gaming industry and every every service or every application as such. So whatever when we play games, right? Those are owned by some big corporation. For example, FIFA is owned by EA Sports, NFS is owned by EA Games. So essentially the corporation has a say, has the final say of whether to keep or add or remove something in a fresh update. And this is the same thing with most services that we use. For example, social media. Social media is owned by a few corporations only. Instagram, WhatsApp, Facebook is all owned by Facebook. YouTube is owned by Google. So all of these are owned by central authorities. What Ethereum is trying to do is break this down and, you know, decentralize almost every aspect of the internet. Right? Now let's look at it from an economic standpoint. Bitcoin has a limited supply. There are only 21 million Bitcoins and no more. So Bitcoin can be compared to gold, right? There is only a limited amount of gold. You can't just make up gold from thin air, right? There is some amount of gold in the earth and once all of that is mined, there is none left. And the same thing with Bitcoin. Once all the Bitcoins are mined, there are no more. While Ethereum on the other hand is an inflationary currency. So some amount of Ethereum is added. In this case, it's 18 million. So 18 million Ether coins are added to the blockchain every year. Now to understand this be better, Ethereum, although it's an inflationary currency, the inflation in itself is decreasing. Okay, let's try to break it down. Let's say there are 100 coins and let's say I add 8 coins at the end of every year. So after the first year, I have 100 plus 8, 108 coins. So my inflation is 8%. But the next year when I'm adding again 8 coins, so my inflation would be 8 divided by 108. So that's around 7.4%. So as I, and the next year I will add 8 to 116. So my denominator is uh, becoming larger and larger, but the numerator is same because the inflation is 18 million in case of Ethereum. But as the market cap grows, that will, the inflation goes down, the relative inflation goes down. So that's, that's from the demand supply standpoint. Now the problem with Bitcoin is out of that 20 million, around 18 million is already mined. So there is around 10 to 12% Bitcoin left to be mined. Now the algorithm of Bitcoin is designed in a fashion 
that as in when you get to the maximum supply the mining becomes more difficult so let's say there are 21 million that's the max supply right but out of that 18 million bitcoins have already been mined so we are left with like 3 million bitcoins now mining that has become way more computational heavy than it used to be earlier and this kind of centralizes power because only the big corporations and only the rich people can do it right now because they can afford to have so much computational energy because it you need like warehouses of gpus to mine one bitcoin so that is again kind of centralizing power towards the rich towards big corporations towards the organizations who can afford to do that who can afford to invest so much energy to mine bitcoins now ethereum comes and solves that problem it's more it's easier to mine and secondly the mining of ethereum is slightly different so there is this thing called sharding which computer engineers will be very familiar with so it's like breaking a single thing into multiple smaller pieces and then joining it together so instead of mining one block you can mine bits and pieces of that block and then you can join it later to create a block of that blockchain so that's a very very rough explanation but that's the entire idea so mining ethereum is easier than mining bitcoin now that that gives back the that decentralizes the power from a mining standpoint because anybody can mine it from their let's say basements right if if they put up some amount of gpu they can they can mine it which is not the case for bitcoin all right now about scalability ethereum is way more fast than bitcoin is so in bitcoin the time taken is around 10 minutes whereas in ethereum a transaction is validated in 10 to 20 seconds so that way ethereum is more scalable another interesting thing is the market cap of bitcoin as of today is around 900 billion so almost like 1 trillion and the market cap of ethereum is around 400 plus uh, billion so it's almost like 45% of of bitcoin's market cap so we can say it's roughly half however if we visit blockchain.com bitcoin has around 245 transactions in the last 24 hours whereas ethereum has 1.5 around 1.5 million transactions so that's about five times the number of transactions actually more than five times and transactions per second for bitcoin is 2.84 whereas transactions per second of ethereum is 17.27 so this is what scalability and sp speed comes in this is where these two factors come in and why ethereum is a way more uh, scalable currency than bitcoin moving on another very important difference between bitcoin and ethereum is bitcoin is proof of work now what that means is to validate a transaction lot of machines let's say five computers are there i'm taking very rough examples but five computers are made to compete with each other and whichever let's say there are five computers and one of them validates a transaction so we use this one so the problem with that is five computers are you know spending the energy but only one is used so it's like used to compete with each other why this is this is the definition of proof of work on a very rough level while ethereum is proof of stake what it means is let's say there are again five computers so one is picked at random it's not actually random but like let's let's take for for rough understanding so one of them is taken at random and this computer has to stake in some of the ether coins so you have to put in some skill in the game to validate that transaction to ensure that you don't you know tamper with that particular transaction this is known as proof of stake so cryptocurrency blockchains are built on either proof of work or proof of stake and proof of stake generally reduces the energy expenditure and it's also a way more efficient way to do it that's from a from an architectural standpoint and finally the utility and applications of ethereum and this is where it gets really interesting this is why ethereum will probably go to 10000 dollars as people say sooner or later and you know be probably the most adopted cryptocurrency because it's very it's it's competing very heavily with bitcoin and i wouldn't be surprised if it o overtakes bitcoin at some point in time so here are the utilities of uh, ethereum i'm sure there are a lot but i'm going to point out a few so one of them is nfts and i've covered a very detailed version of nfts in another video and i'll link it in in the description but just for, just for the context of this video nfts are basically non fungible tokens which help in demarcating ownership right so if you purchase a digital art through an nft then only you can own it it's as good as let's say purchasing a physical art like we used to uh, in in the high art industry people used to people have been buying art all the time right but how how do you know that the 
that a particular piece of art belongs to someone and not someone else right and nfts do that because a a particular token is assigned to you and that is inserted in the blockchain and once that's assigned to you no one else can access that people can have images of that but only you have ownership of of th- that particular art or meme or or graphic design or and all of those things so the art industry is roughly around 60 to 70 billion usd taking rough numbers but a lot of it can be adopted through nfts in the in the next decade and we have already seen baseball cards pokemon cards and all of these translating to nfts that's the first thing the second thing is gaming industry i think gaming industry can be decentralized through ethereum and inside the gaming industry let's say you own a particular gun that is used in fortnite so everybody is using it but you own the you have the sole ownership of that gun so that's how that's how deep it can get in even into the gaming industry so that's the second thing the third thing is called defi so th- this means decentralized finance so apart from just transferring money the finance industry also does a lot of things right in portfolio management insurance lending and all of these can be translated to a decentralized space so that banks are kind of irrelevant at some point in time of course they are not going to capture the entire market cap of banks but at least some of it so ethereum can be the epicenter of nfts and defi and lastly something of this sort right a blockchain similar to ethereum can also be used to conduct elections democratic elections because we all know how elections can be tampered and how you know extortion is used and how a lot of corruption goes into the entire process of electing a president and what not so that is the range of applications that ethereum has to offer and which is which is why a lot of people have been talking about it as a as a very good investment and i think it should be there in your asset allocation i mean on a, on a very rough level this is this is again not financial advice but this is what i personally follow let's say you have 100 rupees to save right so your asset allocation according to your asset allocation you should not allocate more than 10% into your crypto portfolio so if you're investing 100 rupees only 10 rupees should go to crypto and the 90 rupees can go to you know the stock market index funds gold and what not so i tend to follow like let's say 30% of 30 or 40% of my portfolio goes to ethereum and some of it goes to bitcoin 20 30% and the rest of it is divided into other altcoins or just cash that that is from an investment standpoint but i do believe that as 23 euros it's high time that we include ethereum in our portfolio because this thing is only going north it seems uh but obviously do your own research i personally use wazirx to invest in uh, b- cryptocurrency so i'll leave a link in the description which you can use to create an account it's fairly straightforward but you can use uh, wazirx or there are other platforms to coin switch or coin dcx so use whichever you want to but i personally use wazirx so that that's it for the video i think there are a lot of nuanced concepts in ethereum like smart contracts and all of those things which need separate videos so i'm going to cover those in the future maybe as and when i read more about that stuff but that was a very broad high level explanation of how ethereum works fundamentally and why it may have more fundamental utility than any other cryptocurrency in the next few years so it's going to be exciting to watch and uh, safe investing everyone Uh if you find this video helpful please consider subscribing that helps me a lot and I'll see you in the next one cheers